Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Clara, and today I'm back with a red and gold holiday look to share with you guys. And I did use the Natasha Denona Star Palette for most of this look, as well as this beautiful Kyoto Red Tatcha lipstick. I'll be doing a couple little mini reviews of the products that I used as we go through this. I did pick up some new things. As always, I hope that you guys find this helpful, and don't forget to enter in the Guerlain Meteorites giveaway. For my base for this holiday look, I used the two too Faced, Primed, and Peachy, which I have been using and loving ever since I did my review on it. I still think this is one of the best pore filling primers. I used my cream contour and glow shades from the Natasha Denona Sculpt and Glow palette. My Kogan Do Aqua Foundation Illuminator, and this just gives a bit of healthy bronze glow to the foundation. My Clay de Peau Silky Cream Foundation and Concealer, which are my holy grails. And my new Givenchy Prism Libre Loose Powder, which I have been loving. I do feel like it gives a kind of pearly opalescence to the skin. Um, you do have to be a little bit careful when you're shaking it out. Some loose powders you can shake and shake and like nothing comes out, but this one, it does actually give you a good amount of product. And because it's such a super finely milled powder, the brush picks up quite a lot of it. Um, so you kind of have to dab it around first before blending it out. This is definitely pretty mattifying on me and does good job at oil control. For the first few minutes, you do feel that kind of like tightness of the powder. Again, because it's so finely milled that it's easy to pick up a lot of powder. But overall, I think it's an excellent product and it smells really amazing like um, beautiful violets. And let's just jump right into the star palette. So since this is kind of a holiday look, um, I wanted to choose shadows that were very sparkly, but at the same time didn't have fallout, because if you're going to a party and you already have all your face makeup done, the last thing you want is for glitter to fall out on your base. I really love the Natasha Denona Star Palette, but there definitely are some shadows in here that really have a ton of fallout, um, so I've avoided using those shadows in this look today. Any of the shades that say K for crystal, will have fallout so you definitely if you're going to use those shades have to do it before you put on your face makeup and those shades are the two olive shades spectrum and cosmo and also the shade polaris and galaxia which is a shame because those two are really beautiful kind of silvery champagne shades that i feel would look really flattering on the inner third of the lids the look i'm wearing is a little bit similar to the look that you can get with her new holiday joya palette um, and that's one of the reasons why I did actually pass on getting her new palette. As always, I've put on my Too Faced Shadow Insurance Primer and the Too Faced Glitter Glue just on the lid. For the red tones that I'm going to be using today, gray really complements red very nicely. So for my warm gray shade, I went in with the color Diadem all through the crease. And then I blended that out with the pink matte color Vega on my brow bone. For the red, I took the color Phoenix on the outer V. I'm avoiding putting red on the inner third of my lid because sometimes it can make your eyes look a little bit red um, or tired. These red shades are really beautiful and pigmented and they blend extremely well. They don't swatch too well, but don't be fooled by that. To kind of deepen the reddish maroon color, I went in with the shade Electra, which is just a tad darker and more purple. However, that is one of my kind of gripes with this palette is I feel like those two shades are too similar to both be included in the same palette. I would have liked to see one that was a little bit more red or a little bit more purple, um, just to kind of differentiate the two a little bit more. On the lid, I went in with the gold metallic shade Atria, which is stunning. Absolutely no fallout. It's beautiful. Um, and then I kind of blended that together with the maroon shades. On the inner third of the lid, I went in with the shade Bellatrix, which is a really beautiful metallic pinky champagne color. And I blended that into Atria. I wanted to blend out Atria a little bit more, so I took the shade Rhea, which is another metallic, kind of more peachy golden shade, onto the um, outer third of the lid, where those gold and maroon shades meet. Now on my lower lash line, I went in with the shade Supernova, which is supposed to be a duochrome shade. Um, however, again, I find this shade is not very duochrome -y. It is a beautiful kind of shimmery brownish bronze shade. And then I went in with the shade Electra, which is that purpley maroon color on the outer third of the lower lash line. And that's all the shadows that I used from the Star palette. I do think that it's worth the investment if you understand that there are some shades that do have fallout and that you'll have to do your eye makeup first if you want to use those shades. Um, otherwise, I would say to stay away from this palette because the ratio of shadows that have the chroma crystal and hence the fallout in this palette is higher than in any of her other palettes. 
To enhance the eye look, I went in with the Victoria Beckham Eye Foil in the shade Blonde Gold. I do believe that this shade is actually sold out, but occasionally her collection comes back in stock. And this is just a really beautiful pop-in light gold shade that you can use either all over the lid um, if you wanted a really intense glittery look. I just used it on the tear duct. For those of you who are interested in kind of an equivalent to that, the Marc Jacobs Twinkle Pop Eye Stick in the shade Honey Bunny also provides a really great inner corner pop. And because it's a cream stick, you don't have to worry about fallout at all. Moving on to the eyelashes, I did snag a really good Black Friday deal on a couple of YSL mascaras. I tried out the Baby Doll, which the version that I have is not waterproof. Um, and I did also find it a little bit clumpy, but I really am enjoying this Faux Sales Waterproof Mascara. Um, basically, that means they fake eyelashes and mascara, um, which is a bold claim, but I was really actually enjoying this. As I was applying it, I just kept wanting to apply more and more because I felt like with every stroke, my eyelashes just got like longer and more feathery. They didn't really clump at all, although um, every time I use a mascara, I do wipe off the excess before going in, and that really helps to stop clumping. I do think this is one of my new favorite mascaras. I didn't have to brush away any clumps at the end when I was done, and I'm not noticing any kind of fallout from the mascara. Because it's waterproof, I'm expecting good things. I just love the kind of feathery look that it gives. We're going a little bit out of order, but for the Tom Ford Eye Defining Pin, um, I wanted to do this after the mascara so you guys could see the full effect of the lashes. And um, I am enjoying this eye pin. In terms of the eye pins that I've used, it's definitely one of the easier ones to use, especially if you use the bigger tip. Um, my one kind of mini complaint about this eye pin is that it's almost like too liquidy. Normally I struggle with getting enough product out of the pen, like you'll have to keep shaking it to try and get stuff out, or you're drawing your line and it's not like as black and as dark as you want it, but because this one is so black and so dark and easy to come out of the pen, it can kind of spread into like the fine lines and I have a little bit of like a mini hooded eye over here and so it does kind of want to creep into that crease a little bit. It helps if you're applying it on top of an eyeshadow because then you've kind of powdered the crease um, but if you do apply it on like bare lids for a simple eye look I would suggest powdering your eyelid before so it doesn't want to creep into those fine lines. Overall really enjoying this. It's not waterproof that I know of um, but I haven't really had a problem with it walking around in my eyes, even though mascaras that are not waterproof never work for me. Um, for some reason, this pen seems to be okay, as long as I don't touch my eyes throughout the day. And lastly, I've lined my lips in preparation for the Kyoto Red Tatcha lipstick, which is kind of interesting. It's like a vermilion color. Um, and the Tatcha lipsticks are some of the heaviest, most luxurious bullets for lipsticks ever. I also have their Plum Blossom lipstick, and that one is just fabulous. They're really hydrating and comfortable on the lips, and they're easy to apply because of this nice square tip shape on here. I do think this would be a universally flattering red. My one kind of thing to keep in mind is that a blue-based red lipstick is going to make your teeth look very white. Um, because this is an orange-based red, as with any other orange-based lipstick, it is not going to have that effect on your teeth. If anything, it's going to make them look slightly more yellow, so that's just something to keep in mind. For the cheeks, I used my Bobbi Brown Brightening Brick in the shade Cranberry, which is really appropriate for the holidays, and because of the red, I feel like it goes nicely with any red-based lipstick or eye makeup. There's a beautiful kind of deep cranberry shade in here, and then a really shimmery gold shade, so it does give you a little bit of that holiday bling. And for a highlighter, I used my Charlotte Tilbury Bar of Gold, which I love. It gives a really subtle, light golden highlight, which you can build up to be a little bit more intense, but at the same time, it just looks really natural and glowing like candlelight. And lastly, I just set the whole look with my Scandinavia Bridal Finish Spray, and this is one of the best finishing sprays to really hold your makeup in place. And that's it for this holiday look. I hope that you guys will subscribe if you have enjoyed it. I did pick up a couple of the new Chanel Signe du Lion highlighting powders, so I will be reviewing both shades of those. Um, and then also I'm going to try to get my hands on the new Narcissist Wanted palette. It looks really, really pretty. Um, so stay tuned for those reviews. I hope that you all have wonderful holidays, and I'll talk to you again really soon. Bye, guys!